Thank you very much, uh, Roxy. Thank you very much, uh, Sunday morning um, rain strollers. For some of um, us, rain is maybe not so pleasant. For about 700 million farmers, this is, of course, key. Let me give you um, a bit of context. First of all, um, this is probably part of my Dutch humor, but also of my Dutch respect for these um, poor um, uh, farmers that, use, that live in Southeast Asia and basically in Sub-Saharan Africa. Center stage on the left hand from me on the right hand side of Roxy is of course for these forgotten stakeholders. That's why I'm sitting here on the margins. So who are actually out there is 1.9 billion water insecure people. One billion uh, rural poor are sitting on those four chairs in front of you. So that's the ones you're going to dialogue with. Um, what's happened over the last couple of years, just a little context. Uh, food prices exploded. I just checked the website. Um, the mice, rice, soy, um, they have all um, doubled uh, in price. It's, um, it's, it's quite uh, astonishing what that does to, um, to our pockets here in rich Sweden. Actually, very little. But it is the difference, of course, for, um, for people that live of it. Fertilizers have trebled. That's another nice uh, thing if you are not a farmer. But if uh, and when you are uh, making your livelihood of farming, that's not uh, necessarily a good thing. So in other words, um, farming is quite a hazardous undertaking. And um, it's our, our job, together with these um, billion farmers, to make that a, a less hazardous, a less risky undertaking. If we fail, then everybody moves to the cities, as you know, which is um, not necessarily bad, but not always what is the best for cultures, uh, for, the, for migration, and of course for political processes. So in one way or another, um, water uh, security, water for security, is um, uh, a, a debate that leads to water for peace and development as well. Maybe you want to bring that up today, maybe you do not want to bring that up today. But let's not overload this, um, this agenda. Um, meantime, many governments have been successful in combating rural poverty. It's not a, a message of gloom and doom that I'm here to, uh, to share with these billion people. Um, however, due to these externalities of, of prices and, and nowadays very famous climate change, people are not necessarily climbing out of poverty as we used to see in the... Um, in the early 2000s. So what are we discussing here this morning? What is the, the difference that micro-irrigation that, that micro can make in people's lives? Well, actually, we uh, will share with you and you will share with, with the uh, stakeholders, as uh, Roxy indicated, uh, some, some different lenses, some different uh, scenarios, some different dimensions. Um, I think what, um, what is... Um, likely not new to you is, is participatory approaches that, uh, that ought not to be new to you. Uh, so I'm not going into that. Um, our participants may. What I would like to, um, to challenge you um, on is please explore with us a market chain approach, a business model approach, something that goes away from the romantic handhelding and the, the lack of weaning off, which typifies, usually typifies, public-led uh, development processes. So that was a change, a major change for IFAD itself, because we are government, or we work through government mostly. Roxy indicated that there's some new stuff there. We work very strongly with NGOs, and there's... Can I have a show of hands for all those NGOs that, uh, that actually are involved with this Campis project? Can you raise your hand, the ones that are... Well, just raise them. I mean, you can not like little shitty list. You know, raise them. Okay. okay. So people in the front rows can't see the people in the back rows, but as the back rows will come to the front, you may then engage with them. Right. Um, so different dimensions, very important for us. We, we want to combine innovations with, uh, with investments, with infrastructure, of course, the institutions. Welcome. We have uh, uh, another set of abbreviations, the triple A. It's not the Automobile Association. It is to do with uh, accessibility, availability, and affordability. Please go ahead. There's plenty of space on my left-hand side. Mabene. Or wherever you like to sit or stand up. Um, so um, these, these aspects, these multiple I's, these multiple A's, are aspects that I would like um, you to, um, to probe 
our stakeholders on and see what is real behind those slogans because we are very often stuck in, in slogans. Now, you um, have read on the introduction that uh, this particular program on micro-irrigation has uh, somehow changed the lives of 30,000 um, households. And you say, so what? There's another 999 million people out there whose lives we have not touched upon. So how are we going to deal with that? And in our um, way of thinking, uh, that has to do with scaling up. Scaling up successful methodologies, not successful technologies. It's a methodology. It's this, this approach, this market chain approach. And we think it may have some, some benefits for uh, more than just 30,000 people. We will um, listen to our uh, colleagues from India, uh, which government has uh, incorporated elements of this approach in its um, policy to um, uplift the tribals and scheduled castes. We will listen to um, colleagues from Madagascar who are likely to take this to the Comoros and the Seychelles and further on in, in Madagascar. Uh, we uh, will certainly hear from our colleagues from Guatemala where they are engaged in a process to, um, to bring in these changes in a whole series, a whole uh, set of partners um, on rural development fighting uh, more nutrition. So um, with that, I, um, I think um, we will get an overview as indicated by Roxy from private sector, so Sybil will um, address you. I would like you to challenge us on this most significant change. And as you do, you will walk out this room probably convinced that most significant changes are possible. And that's the whole idea of this event. Thank you very much. Sybil, may I have you uh, on the floor? Oh, sorry, not yet. <laughs> um, as as uh, Rudolf I mentioned, <laughs> this uh, Rudolf gave you the, the public sector um, uh, dimension. So as I mentioned, this is, uh, this is a joint public sector and private sector <laughs> partnership. Uh, and we, we all know that small and medium sector, uh, 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 small and medium scale private sector activities have enormous uh, potential to drive uh, uh, development. Uh, and, um, but we also know that for the business models to work, uh, this everybody at all levels need to be engaged. So the, the work has to be done at the individual level, at the community level, and at the private sector level. And to, to make sure that all the interests are met, met this is not an easy uh, feat. And we have learned that in order for it to work, we really need to adopt the holistic uh, approach. Um, and I have now the pleasure to give the floor to Sibel, who will talk about and share with us why they partnered with a public organization for a micro-irrigation uh, food security project. Thank you. Thank you, Roxy. Good morning also from my side. My name is Sibyl Anwander. I'm here. I'm uh, the head of uh, sustainability and public affairs with COPE Switzerland. And I'm here as the representative of Copernic, the fund or the donor of this project, SCAMPIS. Uh, I've learned yesterday evening only <laughs> that we also are a forgotten stakeholder from the business side. <laughs> so I want to bring you in my perspective, why we have engaged in this project, it's not really a story, so I'm rather uh, bringing in a more formal speech, but uh, I think it's important also to see what um, kind of visions we had to be engaged in such a project and what we learned, what lessons we took out of this experience. Well, SCAMPIS is a social project. That means it's not directly linked to a value chain, to a sourcing value chain uh, of ours. It's financed by Copernic. That's a strategic alliance with the, uh, with the aim of common sourcing formed by five European retailers, Conard in Italy, Colroyd in Belgium, Corp in Switzerland, Leclerc in France, and Rewe in Germany and some Eastern European countries. Already here we have these multicultural <laughs> and multilinguistic problems, and it has been expanded to such an interesting, long-lasting long project. All five members are organized as cooperative, 
and Copernic and even more its five members are very much concerned about ensuring the supply of high quality food for their consumers in long term perspective. We have heard about the climate change, we have heard about high rocketing prices that are also concerns for retailers. With the growing world population, the resource is becoming more and more scarce and there are already tangible impacts of the climate change, at least in some countries. This needs a good understanding of the food value change as well as well-targeted investment. Water, or better, its scarcity, is one of the most pressing issues regarding food change. There are different ways to tackle this problem of water scarcity. For example, to sensitize end consumers by water footprint, for example, but also to make aware decision makers about this pressing issue. Another way to tackle the issue is to bring in this issue in the development of international standards like global gap or fair trade. But the most straightforward way seems to work together with organizations, with other actors, to develop pilot projects and then multiply the lessons learned. That is how the collab uh, collaboration with IFAT started. The aim of the SCAMPIS project was to help smallholders to improve their own situation with regard to food security, as we will hear, but also to increase the production in order to sell part of the production on the market, on the local market first, but also as a first step towards access to national and even international markets. The approach proposed by IFAT was to address the problem of water scarcity by the distribution and implementation of micro-irrigation systems linked to organic liquid fertilizers and bring this to smallholders and poor rural households. For Copernic, a sustainable solution has to address all three dimensions of the sustainability concept. That means reduce the ecological impact and increase also the resilience to ecological changes but also to improve the social situation of the stakeholders and also to prove the, the, to be economically sound. Therefore, one main objective of this campus project was to facilitate the development of local markets, including post-sale services for micro-irrigation kits. This approach was new, innovative, and it was also the result of a unique partnership, as it was the first time that the International Fund for Agricultural Development, as a UN organization and uh, a non for profit organization, first worked together with a private partner. Uh, with IFAT, we from Copernic found a professional partner. <laughs> Uh, with a good international reputation in the field. And with this public-private partnership, a lot of contrary perspective and attitude clashed together. Both sides, we had to listen, try to understand, and show willingness to engage in new approaches. But the combination of the experience from both the non-profit development organization and the market and the business perspective on the other side proved to be very valuable for getting a solid and sustainable project. But not only the exchange between the partners Eifert and Copernic was important, but also the exchange of experiences among the three countries among, um, involved boosted the, project's, um, the project establishment. We, as we will see that the exchange between the project partners in India, Madagascar and Guatemala turned to be very rewarding. It was also a very interesting lesson to learn that the situation in the three countries was so different that even the project goals had to be adapted. With one exception although, the target to reach 10,000 ha poor households in each of the three countries that was fixed. But in comparing the strategies with others, learning from one another how to overcome certain obstacles and to get advice when they were struggling, that was fruitful and beneficial for all partners involved. 
And for Copernic, boosting the South to South know-how transfer has always been one of the project goals. The Scampis project was so uh, inspiring that Corp Switzerland, where I'm working at, and as a member of Copernic, we integrated the experiences of the Scampis project into other value chains with the same success. I can give you two examples. The one is the um, building up of an organic and the fair trade cocoa production chain in Honduras, all certified uh, and producing cocoa in an agroforestry system. The cocoa is then sold to a factory, a chocolate factory belonging to our group, Coop. This uh, certified organic and fair trade cocoa value chain had to be established from scratch, as in 1998, the hurricane Mitch destroyed almost the whole cocoa production in Honduras. This region is also highly affected by deforestation and has um, decreasing availability of fresh water. But before any micro-irrigation kit was distributed, the village community evaluated with external experts how much water from which spring is available. Again, it was not the intention of Corp to finance nice new micro-irrigation kits for the cocoa farmers. The project also here was about establishing a stable local market for micro-irrigation kits together with the local smallholders. Thanks to the micro-irrigation system, food security, as well as the diversification of income is now improved in five cocoa-producing produ villages by increasing the production of fruit and vegetable and selling the surpluses on the local market. Another example is our um, uh, cotton sourcing from uh, or also organic and fair trade from Tanzania, from farmer communities there. During dry season, it's difficult to maintain a steady fresh water supply from surface water. Many villages lack also good wells. So instead of just sponsoring <coughs> such wells, uh, the on-site non-profit organization called Biore Association assisted the communities <coughs> in building up water consumer groups. And only by <coughs> establishing these water consumer groups, they were helped and sponsored to build up or restore the wells. By now, a total of 47 new and restored wells can be counted. COP covered the costs of half of them. But what are the lessons learned anyway? We have learned that it is essential to include all people concerned and let them participate and exchange. On a base where all aspects for sustainable development are included, the social, the ecological, as well as the economic factor, projects really gain local impact, as we will hear, long after the last payment from donors reached the country. As food retailers, Copernic and Corp showed corporate responsibility with regard to the important issue of water scarcity by financing and supporting social projects in alliance with non-profit organization. Capacity building and involvement of local stakeholders, market orientation on all levels, and flexibility to react to, local, to the needs of local populations was key for the success of the project. I would like to take the opportunity and thank the campus pro, uh, team at IFAT, as well as the responsible leaders in the three countries for all the efforts they had put in to improve the livelihood for poor rural families. I thank for the inspiring collaboration we have experienced uh, during the three years, or more than three years. It has been also for me personally an exciting experience uh, although I had only had the chance to visit the um, project in Madagascar but however we met uh, and exchanged a lot of insights. I thank especially Rudolf and his team at IFAT for their openness to our sometimes critical questions and also for the development of a special monitoring and evaluation tool. We will hear about that later on. The thorough report they had to give in every six months helped me to communicate 
the progress or the achievement of the project to the board of the directors at Copernic. But I think it helped also the project team to remain focused on the quantitative targets as well as the budget. And uh, we have developed a common understanding on how to measure, measure the results of the project. Output data like kilogram tomatoes harvested or the number of MIS kits distributed normally help to oversee the project, of course. But what counts at the end is the impact. How has the project changed the financial situation, the nutritional status, or the self-esteem of the participating families? And uh, as you will see, these impacts have been so positive, reported in many statements, stories, and interviews, that I can only hope that this campus project will be expanded to other regions and other countries. I am indeed very proud of what we have achieved uh, together. Consumers from rich countries, which will be concerned about these issues, maybe only in the future, and poor farmers in three, struggling against, in three countries struggling against the challenge of water scarcity. Thank you very much, and I hope you will learn a lot during this seminar. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sibel. Mm -hmm. And thank you for being um, a great partner. And thank you. You know, it is not really easy to work with private sector for us uh, because sometimes the, the whole vision and, and the goals are different. But with you guys, it was different. And as you said, uh, I think the openness on both uh, fronts was really what made this thing to work. So thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, now before hearing the stories, uh, uh, you're going to be hearing from the mother of this project. Uh, Cecilia has been nurturing this project for three years and uh, she has been uh, the one who has been pushing all of us. She's been sharing the achievements of this project. She's been working with all of the stakeholders uh, on this project and she really has taken it upon herself to make this project work. So it is a pleasure to give the floor to Cecilia, who will be talking about the uh, m and &E of this, uh, the, the methodology that, that uh, she's used to, um, to, make, to, to actually take this project uh, forward. Um, one word about Cecilia is so what her earnestness and his, her enthusiasm has been really contagious uh, over these uh, three years. Uh, and she has taken some risks because she has break, broke the mold uh, and she has tried uh, uh, quite a number of uh, uh, new things. Uh, and, uh, and I'm sure you'll be delighted to see uh, the results. Uh, Cecilia. Well, what an introduction. <laughs> So my name is Cecilia Roberto and uh, I'm in charge, I'm facilitating the monitoring process within the three countries. Um, but I would like to first of all tell you a little bit why, how came out the idea of this seminar that could be a little bit of kamikaze seminar because we come out with a, the idea of just telling stories. Why stories? Actually, this is the result of what happened since the beginning until today. Mm -hmm. Looking, the project started um, working and developed a monitoring evolution system that was looking at collection of that information. We were really um, paid a lot of uh, attention on collecting information on how um, our partners were developing the strategy, how they were adapting the strategy, like looking, watching at the numbers collecting a lot of numbers. And we have a quite of interesting monitoring evolution because it's been developed in a participatory way. So we have a cross-cutting sharing monitoring evaluation. We can compare the strategies, the achievements. But we had this monitoring evaluation and when we started analyzing the data and discussing about that, we saw, yes, these are numbers, but these numbers are not talking. These are not telling really What's, in, what's happening really? These numbers are, we want to know what's behind this number. So together we decided to do something more, to start 
quali a qualitative process of collecting information to discover what is behind the fact that, yes, we discovered actually that um, productivity increased in the three countries. But this productivity actually is not talking about tons of uh, tomatoes per year, so now the farmers have tons of tomatoes. They have an increase of kilos of tomatoes. So is, the increase is small, the numbers are small, but when you go to the field, the farmers are really happy. They, are, they feel that the change, the change has been enormous. So at that point, we decided, yes, we have to really understand and bring up the voice of our farmers. And so now today we are here because we want to listen up the stories of the most significant change of, of, what, of our beneficiaries, what has been for them this most significant change. And actually this has been, I'm talking about most significant change because this is also the name of a technique we have uh, introduced toward the end of the project, so we are readapted. And this, in, in, uh, this methodology ha has been through interviews. Um, the kids of the same village went to their uh, parents, went to their uh, friends in the same village who were using micro-irrigation, and they went to them and they started asking questions. What has been for you the most significant change since you started and today? What, what has been the most, the, the biggest difficulties and then they established, and we recorded, so we have many, many interviews, and we have many voices, and, and, and it is be beautiful listening at that, at that. And what is very uh, important, what we learned, is that they had the most significant change only because they faced enormous difficulties. They didn't have any type of vegetable most of the time, or they didn't uh, irrigate the, uh, the land with micro-irrigation, and they saw the technology that is something quite weird for them, for someone who is not used to know ma this type of technology, and they faced many difficulties. The land was unfertile and was hard, and they didn't know how to cultivate vegetables, and they, they, they had to really, really um, have a strong willing in uh, going uh, through the difficulties, and who made uh, who uh, get the, this challenge, who decided to go through this, at the end uh, shared a, a big, big um, happiness for the results. So I think what, what we would, uh, the reason why we are here to telling stories is because um, at the end, yes, we have many numbers. We can tell you the differences between the strategies, the numbers of beneficiaries, uh, or we can give you the outcomes of the project. This we will do it for sure because it's very important. But for us, also today is a moment, it's a process to put on the, on, on the, on the plate what has been the real, the, the real change, the dimension of change. And I think at the end of the day, what we are looking for uh, to understand is that, that the, di the, the change has many, many dimensions. And uh, the dimensions uh, will be represented here today with the stories from the, other, the various country. I don't want to, uh, it's kind of challenging. I don't want to give you numbers now. Uh, I could, but I mean, I, I would really open the floor for the stories because Everybody here, I think, is, is want to listen to the stories. So, thank you. Okay.